Okay, the topic of today is about self-healing. It's about how you're going to heal yourself. You have to understand what health is. According to yoga, health is health of body, of mind, and of spirit. Because you are not just only the, the physical body, 50 kilo, or how many pounds, which is made of, we say the five elements, earth, and then water, and then fire, air, and ether. So the science of Ayurveda talk about your constitution. Yeah, some people are more earth and water, so they are more heavy. And some people are more fire, so they are more hot. And some people are more air, so they fly up in the air. <laughs> Okay, so we are not just only the physical body. We are also, um, you can say energy, okay? Because the mind is nothing else but energy. So we are also, there is a subtle aspect of ourselves that is our mind. So the body is a vehicle, like a car. It's not just only the body of the car. If you have the body of the car perfect, but you have no engine, the engine is dead, then that vehicle is useless. So you have also the engine, which is the mind, the operating system of the vehicle. So, you are also this engine operating system of the vehicle in a subtler manner that is also influenced by the five elements. But we talk about the five subtle elements for the body, we talk about the five gross elements. For the mind, we talk about five subtle elements. The energy, yeah? that's why we say subtle, means the energy. The energy of water, the energy of earth, the energy, you can imagine, yeah? the energy of earth is more solid, yeah? more still, the energy of water that is more fluid. The energy of, of fire that is more, um, how say, decisive or determining or, you know, sharp. And the energy of air that is more expensive, energy of ether, completely subtle and expensive. Expensive means not, uh, not, not, uh, not expensive in terms of uh, costly, but expensive means expanded, expanded, open, uh, comprehensive, light, complete, whole. So, you have these uh, two vehicles, the physical, the mental, emotional, and uh, energetic. In yoga, Vedanta, 
which is the philosophy of yoga. We talk about the different layers of consciousness. The different, those who study Vedanta yoga, you understand it's called kosha, or the different veils of consciousness. Very interesting concept that you need to understand. So the idea in self-healing is you need to heal yourself, body, mind, and spirit. By understanding, the, for one is you have to understand the different, um, you can say layers of yourself because you want to heal yourself in many different levels. Because you know it's all real, it's all connecting with, to each other. If you heal this aspect, but you neglect that aspect, then it doesn't work. So you have to bring to light all the different aspects. So now which one go first and which one is more uh, impacting your health? So some people would say it's your physical body if I'm going to eat good food and I'm going to take vitamins and I'm going to follow all the channel about health and I know what to do, then I'll be healthy. So I will take care of my body. That's very good, but not sufficient. You need to understand the relationship between body and mind According to the yoga teachers and the scriptures, then the mind is the first cause of disease. Because the mind is unhealthy, that the body will become unhealthy. So if you, uh, let's say you drive a car and there's uh, some sim symptoms on the dashboard is some light flashing, say engine, check engine. And you're going to smash the light. So there's no more flashing and you continue. So that is not going to work. So the same, the symptoms of uh, disease, the symptoms of ailment or symptoms of discomfort in the body that you feel are not to be disregarded. When it comes out in the physical body, according to yoga teachers and scriptures, it's already at the end of the line. But the disease or the, the the discomfort starts first in the mind, that means in your wrong thinking. So you need to take care of the symptoms that already manifest in the body, but you need to go deeper and you need to take care of the mind, the wrong thought. So that's why there is many techniques in yoga of introspection, of meditation, of self-inquiry, of self-observation of the thoughts in the mind, of sitting still or doing asana, slow down. There's a relationship between the body and the mind very tight. That's why when we do asanas, we move the body in a certain manner. We also will impact the mind. It's more difficult to see the mind. It's easier to see the body, but you have to know when you move the body, you are moving the mind. 
And when you move the body, you are moving the energy. And the energy is impacting the mind. Energy and thoughts are the same. Again, I repeat, if you move the body in a certain manner, you move the mind, you move the energy, and you move the mind. So oftentimes, our thoughts are very sticky, very stuck, very old, because we have these patterns of thinking in the mind. Everyone has differently, but everyone has these patterns. And we get stuck there. So that's why asanas, moving the body, moving the energy and moving the mind, not only moving and, you know, disorganizedly, <laughs> in a disorganized manner, but we say regulating. Regulating. Regulating the movement of the body along with the movement of the breath along with your movement of your energy will bring about a state of well-being when the energy starts to move and you are not stuck then you feel better okay but there is something more than this. This is about the relationship between the physical body and the, called the subtle body. Okay. That is made of the prana, the vital energy, your mind, your emotions, and your thinking. But there is a deeper level of uh, the mind that is, you can say, is related to your heart or your deep feeling of love or oneness, your spiritual heart. That is also very important in health and self-healing. Some people, you can see, they're strong in body, they're strong in mind, but there is a thicker veil in, in their heart. Or it comes and goes. It's not very open. The heart is not very open. That means the awareness, here I throw different new words, the awareness is not steady. So sometimes they feel good and sometimes they are in like darkness. So that's why self-healing has to come with also the awareness of the, the spiritual heart. In Vietnamese, there's a very clear actually words that describe that. We say, Tâm, tâm hồn. Uh, it's like your spirit and your heart. So I describe in English, spiritual heart. <laughs> in English, there is no such word. There is the word spirit. But then it's missing something because the, the heart is missing. So I say the spiritual heart. Because in Vietnamese, there's the word tâm hồn. When a person is not connected to their spiritual heart, they are like a dead person. 
even though they are alive, they are breathing, they have pulse, they, they function, they go here, there. But in Vietnamese, there is a word called mất hồn. You lose your spirit. Sống như là mất hồn. You live, but you lost your spirit. So you are like a ghost. <laughs> mất hồn. Không có hồn. <laughs> hồn means spirit. Yeah. Or you can say, không có tâm, không có hồn, không có tâm hồn. I mean, not connecting with your heart, not connecting with your spirit, Empty like a robot, like a machine, like a computer. So don't believe that you are a computer, okay? If you watch too much of your cell phone and, and Facebook and, and, you know, the news and you are all the time with the computer, then you might think that you are the computer, okay? But the computer can never replace your thumb hồn, your spiritual heart. The computer cannot replace that. And if you watch too much computer, then you might mut hồn, you might lose your spirit. Okay? So very important that you um, remember who you are that means you be aware of completely who you are. This spirit, this spiritual heart that is very subtle to access. You need to remember that. And then this mind and emotions that are a little bit and thinking, mind, emotion, thinking process that is more gross, and then the physical body that even more outer or grosser, okay? So you have to remember the five levels, the five sheath or the five levels of consciousness, okay? So the five levels of consciousness, I mean, how much are you aware, okay? If you are aware only about your external, your muscle and bone and your size and your weight. So you are you have that physical awareness only. That's what you think you are. You walk around thinking that you are this, this flesh and bones, 150 pounds or 50 kilo. That's what you think you are, okay? And you are very concerned about the body, okay? So that's the first level of consciousness. The seven, second level of consciousness is when you become more aware of your subtle self. Your subtle energy, your subtle mind, your subtle emotions, your way of thinking. You know your way of thinking, you feel the way how you think. Yeah, and you can regulate it and you have to calm down the mind and the thinking and the emotion. You can switch your thoughts and you can come work on your energy that will change your thoughts. So these are the, the subtle level of consciousness, okay? You become aware, again, the second veil. The first veil is the physical veil, okay? So that makes you identify with the physical body. I am 150 pounds. I am one meter high. <laughs> In Vietnam, there are people that are one meter high. So here they are shocked. <laughs> Nobody is one meter high, but uh, you know, <laughs> one meter and a half high. <laughs> okay. So if you are aware of that level of your weight and your size and your shape, you are, your level of consciousness is on the physical level, okay? But you have to know that it's not just the outside of the car, it's the inside, the engine is very important. So you start to become aware of the 
engine. So you are starting to become aware of your energy. Okay? You feel the energy more. Okay? Wherever you go, you feel the energy. It's a training. Yoga train you to become aware of that. So you enter into your second sheath, which is the energy sheath layer. Okay? And then the third is the mind. Yeah? Like I said, the operating system. <laughs> then you, you become more aware how you can change it, how you can refine it, because you know that your, the mind is very related to the senses. If your senses are very active all the time, seeing, you know, shopping, uh, going here, going there, yeah? so then the mind will be very active. Yeah, we say that uh, a dead mind, a tamasic mind, a rajasic mind, very jumping around and then the more calm mind. So you become more aware of the mind and you can regulate the mind so that you affect the, uh, you know, you, you heal the mind. Okay. And sometimes you are very, very stuck in some thoughts that are very deep from the subconscious mind. So you have to dig it up. Yeah, some memory, something you, you feel hurt, some trauma from before. So you have to really heal it. So there is technique that to heal. Yeah, but mainly is you need to become aware of it. You know it so that you can release it. Yeah, so you don't identify, you cease to identify with this stuckness or this thought or this pattern or this trauma or this memory. That's how you do healing of your second, third, your third level, which is your mind. And your mind and the emotions are together with the senses. That you need to understand. Your mind, the emotions and the senses are together. So when you do the third level of self-healing, then you're going to understand this, you know, how the, the connection between this, the, the mind, the emotion, and the, you know, the subconscious mind. And the, the fourth level of self-healing is the, the intellect. Okay? Refer to the consciousness that is stuck by the intellect. You, you, just, you just can only think so much. That's it. <laughs> Your thinking is also limited. Yeah, so what you think is what you become. So you only can think so much about yourself. So that's what you become. Yeah? But self-healing of that level means you have to understand that you have capacity of thinking higher thoughts. Because what you think is what you are. So you can educate yourself by learning about other people that have higher thinking. You know, you read books of people like Master Shivananda, long, uh, very, it's a saint, it's a sage, he has lots of books. So instead of reading novels or newspaper or the news, you're going to read Swami Shivananda books and it changes your way of thinking. Okay? And once one thought change your way of thinking, like for example, the thought, I am not my body, yeah, this uh, different idea of I think who I am is only where my consciousness are stuck. So by changing my way of thinking and changing my, um, my source of information, I can change the way how I feel about myself and the way how I feel about the world and it will change my energy and it will change my, my, um, my rapport with my body, my rapport with the relationships that I have around me, the rapport with life, with the universe, with people around me, see? 
So that's the, the change in consciousness, change in thinking. But self-healing, the fourth level is not enough for yoga. Yoga will lead you to the, I said what the fourth, yeah. No, yoga leads you to the fifth level of self-healing. That means that means detaching, not identifying with even the the bliss within. And it's called Ananda Maya Kosha, which is the, the level of, of happiness that we feel within us. So if you get to the level of being feeling happy, you are already very happy and you want to sit there. You want to remain there. You think this is it. I'm completely healed. I'm completely now reached out to my spiritual heart and I'm, I'm happy. See? But, you know, Yoga Vedanta go uh, one level deeper. It says that you are none of this. These are only your levels of consciousness, your veils of consciousness, your level of consciousness. That's where you are, the maximum where you can be aware of. Yeah? If you are aware of your spiritual heart, you're already very much aware of a lot of things but it's not enough. Because yoga and Vedanta philosophy go deep, bring you, go to another level, which is the level of the truth. That is going beyond all your thinking, all your feeling, all your emotions, all your attachment, all your relationships and the of course the the outer body okay that is the level of the truth of the we call the atman those who did not study vedanta you need to um, study more so you understand this ultimate level of truth that transcend all the five levels of self-healing. At that time, it is said that you, you become the self. Okay? You are that complete self-awareness that we call Satchidananda, that truth that is all knowledge and that is all love and one, okay? So you get that? I repeat again, because it's something that it's not easy for you to understand if they're first time, okay? I repeat again that we have three vehicles, the body, the mind, the spirit, yeah, with these three vehicles, we, we operate at many different levels. We operate when we are awake in the physical body. I'm here and you are sitting there. Yeah, we operate when we are in the, in the dream state, when we are sleeping. Yeah, then it's, we are not functioning out of our physical body, but we function out of our subtle body. We function like that in our dream state. We go here, we go there but without the physical body. And then we operate in the more subtle body that we call the causal body, a deeper sense of, of, uh, of self. So now get back to the five uh, layers of consciousness, five, ways how you're going to 
uh, be aware of yourself. Five ways how you're going to be aware of yourself. Then you have the, pe the people that are more aware of their physical body, okay? So that the first level of awareness is the physical. And then there's uh, people that are more aware, that become more aware, it's something that you have to learn of energy, okay? Then, uh, then, you know, it's not complete awareness yet if you become aware of energy. And there's people that become more aware of their thoughts and emotions and, you know, how it links with the senses and they become more aware of the mind and they learn how to correct their thinking. They learn how to, you know, um, transcend the idea of the, the senses. That is, um, you know, that's always leads you somewhere else, seeking for happiness in the, in the senses and then losing your mind. So there is the third level of the mind, emotion and senses. The fourth level is the way how you think, how you understand, how you become aware, the level of your ego. And the fifth level is the level of your your spiritual heart, your deep heart. Okay, so you need to heal yourself from these five different levels. And ultimately you be you become healed. Once you attain to the truth of yourself, then you are completely healed. So the journey of life is a journey of self-healing. And self-healing is in, in three different levels, body, mind, spirit, or spiritual heart. And we analyze it deeper in these five different layers of consciousness so you know what to do. Okay? So I know for you, for many of you, it's completely uh, <laughs> difficult to understand what I'm talking about today if you don't have any kind of foundation. But, you know, you still have to understand it. Yeah? There's a, when you are completely healed, you are pure consciousness and you realize that I am pure consciousness. I am free. You know, I am in everything and everywhere. Yeah. And then you, you are completely detached from this body, mind, spirit entity. You know that I am much more than this life. Okay. But before you get to that, you have to take care of yourself. You have to take care of many things, okay? You have to take care of your body. You have to take care of your mind. You have to take care of your energy. You have to take care of your spirit, your spiritual heart by meditation. So the five points of yoga, Swami Vishnu Devanji gave you the yoga lifestyle. will cover it all, that means you have to do every day, you have to do the asanas, yeah, to be aware of the physical body, to move your energy and not to be stuck. And then you have to do your pranayama, the breathing exercise, the yogic way, so you can balance your energy. So your energy is not stuck. And then you have to do your um, 
relaxation. So then you are not stuck again. You do your relaxation so then you can let go easier because if you don't let go, then you tense up and you build up the, the stress and the tension. So you have to learn to let go and um, you have to learn to relax and you have to learn also the fourth point is you have to learn how to eat to nourish your body but at the same time nourish your energy and then you have to learn to think positively because one of the symptoms of you not being healthy mentally, emotionally, is you have negative emotions. You have stress, you have fear, you have anxiety, you have a lot of anger, you have a lot of resentment, you have a lot of desire. So you are frustrated in your desire, so you become more angry, and then you have a lot of problem in relationship because you, you know, when you are angry, then you blame somebody. And then you try to explain everything because you want to understand, but you cannot understand. So you explain everything and you want to convince everybody to follow your way of explanation of things. And if people don't follow your way, then you are angry at them and then you shoot them, you kick them, you fight with them and it creates more problem in your life of up and down of this and that, and then you are further away from your truth. <laughs> and then you are more and more subject to unhealth because your, your mind is unhealthy, the emotions are unhealthy, okay? So that's why yoga teaching teach you a lot on positive thinking, on uh, non-violence, on truthfulness, on uh, not the uh, accumulation, try to control your desire, try to control your emotional sexual impulse and uh, try not to desire so much and to do a little bit of a, um, austerity, feeling contented, count your your luck instead of all the time run by desire and then try to clean around you, clean your mind, clean your body, clean everything so, so that you can bring the light. And so it's a lot of positive thinking techniques that you learn, okay, to clean your mind. And ultimately, you'll be able to meditate. And in meditation, you heal, okay? But you cannot meditate right away. So you have to do all the other thing in order for you to be able to meditate, okay? So when you meditate, then the split, yeah? Between this inside feeling and the outside life, become reconciled, then you feel more one, you feel everything coming together, you go deeper within yourself, you understand a lot of things that normally when you run here and there, you cannot understand. But when you sit very still, you focus inward, then you start to have a very clear idea of everything and you start to be able to be responsible of your life because you're no longer blaming pe other people, but you understand it's your way of thinking that create the problem. 
and then you you become aware of your of your uh, repeated pattern way of thinking and your attachment and then you can work on it see so meditation solve a lot of problem it bring you to that oneness so to be able to meditate I guide you in meditation before the two important things that you, you need to remember. One is you need to keep the body still, the mind still and relax. Very still. So you can see. That's why you practice asana to so be able to have a good posture so you can be still. You practice concentration. The mind is healthy when it's able to con be concentrated. A person's mind that is very restless, run here, run there, distracted. One this, one that is not healthy. So you have to learn to concentrate the mind, be still. And then a person that is all the time um, you said that all the time not open okay also not healthy if the person is not able to be open okay? and why you can be open how you can be open you can be open when you have trust and faith when you have love when you have love trust and faith then you can be open because you know that nothing can happen you know that everyone is your own self, but if you are fearful, anxious, tight, tense, not relaxed, not open, holding on to your idea about things, then you are not healthy. Then you, you get stuck because you keep holding on to that one idea of yourself, yourself against the world. Oh my God. How can you live like this? Yourself against the world? Then you're all the time tense. Because the world is all the time around you, people all the time around you, different things happen around you and you are against the world. You have to defend yourself against the world. Oh my God. Then you'll be very tense. Okay. That's where the stress comes from. Is that wrong idea that the world and you are separated and you have to defend yourself against the world? Okay. So you have to learn to heal that idea by relaxing. You have to learn how to relax. Some people can never relax. You have to learn to open up. To feel that the other people and myself are one. You have to learn to love instead of be afraid of. You have to learn to trust. <clears throat> instead of remembering all the time your trauma from past. Your mistake from past. Now you have this past mistake from past. Maybe that bring the pain. But still now you are different. You cannot live according to the past. Now you have another opportunity to open up, to love, to trust, to have faith, to feel that the world is one. So forget about the past. Be in the present. When you are in the present, you are one and you are complete and you are open and energy is flowing. You are not afraid. There's no wall around you. You are not limited. You and others are one. Then you are healthy. Okay, so I talk like this, it seems to be easy, but it's not easy. <laughs> but I say the general idea of what happened when you are not healthy, so that you know, you know, how deep you should go to heal yourself and how, how it takes time. Okay, you have to have self-love, then you love others. Okay, you have to 
do self healing that you can help other to heal. So in Ayurveda, which is a science of medicine, they say there are three causes of disease. The, it's so nice. Okay, very different than, than the Western medical model. It says the first cause of disease is the forgetfulness of yourself. That means the forgetfulness of your state of health. Of that truth who you are. If you forget that, then you start to be uh, limited. And then slowly, you know, your wrong thinking about yourself will bring about the, the disease in the body. And then you break down. So if you want to heal, you have to heal. You have to climb up the consciousness, climb up the different level of energy yeah, from the body breakdown and you have to go into, it's very difficult when the body breaks down, you have disease to think that you are healthy, but that's what you have to do. In the disease itself, you have to say, think that I am healthy and then you climb up the level. I am not the body, I am not the mind. You climb again to the level, I am pure uh, spiritual heart and then I am pure consciousness. So you have to climb up the level. You have to assert your healthy self. The moment you be able to assert the healthy self, then everything, because the healthy self is the truth, is the boss. So then you, you become the master of your life, master of your destiny, and the body and the mind will listen to you. You see? But for so long, so long, if you identify with body, mind, and the thinking in the mind, then it's very difficult for you to break through. That's why yoga has all these techniques that you need to practice, you need to apply. So eventually you're, you, you break through all the different uh, places where you are stuck and you become free you know, without uh, crazy. You know, people, they say, I'm free, but in fact, they are crazy. The more they say I'm free, the more they are crazy. Yeah, so yoga comes with self-discipline. Self-healing comes with self-discipline, step by step. You have to learn to regulate the body, regulate the mind, regulate the, the prana, regulate your thinking, learning the words of wisdom from other teachers, and from books, having satsanga, like what you are having now. So then you regulate yourself. Okay. And then slowly, slowly you open up and then you become free. Not when you think that you are free. Okay. So healing means get back to your free nature get back to your love nature, get back to your knowledge deep within you, the truth that is within you. Yeah, healing is get back to yourself. And you can do it, self-healing, self-healing. Other people can help you, but you know, doctor can help you, therapist can help you, yoga health educator can help you. Yeah, but the prime person that help you is yourself. Because it's about awareness, it's about knowing, it's about consciousness. Okay? So, please do the five points of a yoga life. Do the asana, do the pranayama, do the relaxation, do the proper diet, do the positive thinking and meditation. And also, eventually, learn the far path of yoga the Karma Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Raja Yoga, Jnana Yoga, that will help you to break through your layers, your, where you, you are stuck, where that you are not able to see through correctly about yourself. 
And so these are the different discipline of um, attitude of body, mind that would help you to bring it all together so that every, everything becomes transparent and calm. Yeah. So that you can detach and affirm yourself. So you can see. The bottom line of all this is that it seems to be very complicated, but bottom line in all this, you have to keep in mind. Otherwise, you get lost and you don't know why I have to do this, why I have to do that. I'm tired of this. Yeah. The bottom line is you'll be able to be very clear, very uh, happy. That's the bottom line. Very free, very clear, very knowledgeable, and very happy. That's your goal of self healing. Nothing very complicated. That's what you want. Okay? So you, the more you be able to learn all these things, yeah, don't let the ego tell you that I already know. No, all the time, you know, know that you, you know better. You can know better. And this the ego idea that I know already is this thing that makes you stuck. Okay? So let go of the idea that I know so that you can open up to something. So that's why I say you need to open. Self-healing comes with openness. You need to learn to open. You need to learn to focus and open both together. If focus, focus all the time yeah, and not be able to open, something is wrong. Yeah, not oh, if open all the time, run here and there, everything, I, I love you, everything, and yet not be able to be yourself and be focused, something is wrong. Okay, so that's why I say that you have to be balanced. Step by step, you have to do that. Openness is important, but not distraction. Yeah, not, uh, you know, fear, attachment, you come due to attachment, yeah, it's also not good, but um, also not be able to, to be strong and be yourself and say no to things, be concentrated, it's also not okay. Hare Om Tat Sat, that's in enough for this morning, it's a lot of thinking there, so I uh, encourage you to continue studying, continue practicing, there's a lot of opportunity, you know, online. The yoga centers are teaching all the time, every day to allow you to do the daily practice. So please take hold of these classes and, um, and study more about yourself, okay? Any question? Jagatamba has questions, so please ask. Thank you. Good morning, Sean Sita. Um, uh, I, uh, I tried to look for you. I still didn't find oh, you. Oh, I know. My, my lamp is too far away. <laughs> okay. But uh, I can see you well. Okay. Um, just I, I love what you said um, about the, the importance of having faith. Faith. Okay. To um, have this feeling of um, connected with... Uh, with the wholeness. Uh, can you say more about that, how to increase this faith? How to it's increase well, the whole practice, right? The, the, the Sivananda practices is, that will be the way. Okay. And somebody also remind me that I started to talk about the three causes of disease, but I talk only one and then I stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first the three causes of disease. And second question is about faith, okay? So three causes of disease. One is the forgetfulness of self. That's why I stopped because that, that, that's how we forgot. Okay. <laughs> the first cause of disease is forgetfulness of the truth, forgetfulness of the self, okay? That's the first cause of disease. Everyone has that. That's why we all need to do self-healing, okay? 
The second cause of disease is when you use your intellect incorrectly, when your, your intelligence is used incorrectly, okay? When you, um, you are not uh, using your intellect proper, so you make wrong decision about things, okay? About what you eat, about your lifestyle, yeah? So you, you are not uh, using your intelligence properly to make a proper choice, okay? So that you eat wrong, you live wrong, you lose your energy, that's how you, you become diseased. And the third cause of disease, everyone has it also, is the, the notion of time. How, you know, your, this is something more difficult to understand, but time comes with the mind. Because there is no real time, you know, because all of it depends on the mind. For one person, you know, the one hour is very different than another person one hour. It depends on how the speed of the mind. So when you, you use your mind a lot, you cause disease. Clear? When you use your mind a lot, you know, worry, worry, thinking, thinking, 10,000 thoughts, then you become more diseased. Okay? That's why people that are meditating, then uh, they are quieting, quieting the mind, they quiet the mind, the mind become more calm, yeah? and they can be in the state of being, being themselves, then at that time they live long. Yeah? They are more detached, they are not, nothing will, will just aggravate them, so then they are more, they are more themselves, then at that time, you know, the, the mind is not making them uh, disease, okay? So that's the three causes of disease. Now faith, Jakatamba is asking about faith, uh, about how, how faith help you to heal. Um, so we don't, we don't, we are climbing the hill. <laughs> like I say, we're climbing the, the hill of uh, consciousness, of awareness. Yeah, we drop down to the level of I am this poor body. Yeah, and then you climb up to the le level of, you know, I am energy and then I can regulate my mind and then I can use my intellect now to take proper decision. And then I, I am my spiritual heart and I love everyone. So you are climbing that hill of consciousness, okay? But when you climb that hill of consciousness and you don't know where you go, because you are here and then you are climbing that hill, but you don't know where you go, then you need faith. You need faith to give you the extra energy to help you to walk the path, to do things correctly, okay? So the three levels of faith. Faith also means knowledge, it's not blind faith, okay? So I'm talking to you, I'm talking to you, I'm talking to you, but basically I help you to have more faith in the teaching of yoga and the practice of yoga. So you can have more energy to practice. I'm not going to do it for you. Yeah. Hearing me is not going to help you because I'm, unless you practice, then it helps you. Because you practice, you have the direct experience of what I'm talking about. When I say that you are stuck and you need to unstuck yourself. Yeah. So when you do the asana, the meditation, and you feel so good, all of a sudden, you feel so good. You feel so bad yesterday. You feel so bad just an hour ago, half an hour ago. And now you practice and you feel so good, you see? So that's called your direct experience, okay? And I'm just talking to you so that you get, uh, you know, encouraged yeah, to practice. So direct experience is more important than faith. But faith is very important if you don't have the direct experience yet, okay? So you need to have faith in yourself. I mean, in deep inside of yourself, you have to know, okay, 
my spiritual heart is saying that I am free, but I don't feel free. So I'm going to have faith that I will get there. Okay, so you have to have faith in yourself. If you have doubt in yourself, you say, oh, you know, I'm just uh, this guy and I'm doing this life and I, I'm all the time sick and I'm all the time in darkness. And this knowledge of yoga is something that I cannot deal with, you see, then, um, then I cannot. You see, you have doubt about yourself. So the first level of faith is faith in yourself, your capacity of self-healing. Number second level is you have faith in, okay? So, so because the teacher would say to you things that you do not come up with yourself. So you need to have faith in the teacher that will guide you, that loves you and guides you, you see? So if you don't have faith in me talking to you, you will not sit there, you know, on, 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 online and, you know, and listening. Yeah, so you have to have faith also in the teaching, in the practice, in the system of teaching. Okay, so when you practice, then you have faith, and it will give you the 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 direct experience of uh, feeling feeling open and feeling unstuck. So Jagatamba asks again, how do you increase faith? You you um, by these three three things. Yeah. How do you increase faith? You have to increase faith in yourself. You have to increase faith in the teacher. And you have to increase faith in the teaching by practicing. Okay? So one will help in influence the other. So let's say that you have faith in the teaching. Okay, fine. Then you just go and take classes and and do your practice and your meditation, even though you have no idea what you're doing when you meditate, yeah, but you have faith, so then you practice, okay? So you practice the teaching, and then after you, you do some time, the teaching, and you start to feel good, and you say, wow, that teacher actually knows what they are talking about, yeah? That five points of yoga, you know, that teacher, wow, I think they know that way are talking, see? So you have faith in the teacher, and then when you have faith in yourself, you, you, you start to become more clear when you have less confusion. You don't have faith in yourself when you have too much confusion. Yeah. So practice first. Yeah. And then have faith in the teaching, have faith in the teacher. Some people, they have faith in the teacher first. Yeah. They have to like the teacher before they do the teaching, <laughs> before they practice. Fine and good. Yeah, you can uh, like the teacher and then you do the, the practice. But the main thing is you have to do the practice. So you have the direct experience. Yeah, then you like the teacher more and you like yourself more. <laughs> okay, so you, you cannot increase faith in yourself just like this because you have confusion, so much confusion in your mind. Yeah, so it doesn't matter. Then you don't have faith in yourself. Fine and good. So have faith in the teaching. Have faith in the teacher and keep practicing. Then you will increase the faith toward yourself because at that time you become so clear. Yeah. Then your mind is constantly giving you doubt, constantly giving you obstacle. Yeah. But then you have the, also the faith that you constantly turn it around and say, no, no, mind, bye bye. No, mind, I don't listen to you. No, the self is talking and the self keeps talking. So then at that time, you become more clear about yourself, okay? So you cannot just increase faith in yourself just by saying, I'm great, you know? No. <laughs> There's 10,000 things in your mind that say to you that you are not great, yeah? But there is a faith in you that is stronger that say that actually I'm great. Actually, I know. Yeah, I think that I don't know, but actually I know. Okay, so how do you get this very clear? By practicing, by having direct experience. Okay, then you increase the faith toward the teaching, increase the faith toward the teacher, increase the faith toward yourself, and that's how you continue. Okay, clear, Jagatamba. 
either way yeah because you are in darkness you need somebody to help you if somebody help you and you don't do anything then it's also cannot forever the teacher will not babysit you forever the teacher can teach but you have to be the one that will practice okay so the whole the whole three thing that we say the the teacher the teaching and yourself are all linked together the, the three things linked together so that means that you can start this way or that way yeah it would connect you start with faith in the teacher yeah then you would have more faith in your teaching and you have more faith in yourself okay so different people different way you you that's how you you start but the idea is you should not live in darkness you should not live in doubt okay and then you you um, there's a, the whole universe that is helping you to get out of where you are okay So uh, no no other questions. I complete. I finish here. Thank you. Everyone gave a smile, and I see your face. Okay, everyone is look like a frowning and very serious and unhappy. So you know, I'm not making you unhappy. So please have a smile. You are happy because you have knowledge. Uh, the teacher giving you some some kind of opening, some kind of knowledge. So, you know, you have to think about it because you are not going to all of a sudden, you know, understand everything like right away, you know, but it doesn't matter because the, whatever you hear will come into your mind. And one day, 10 years from now, you say, oh, I remember that day Swami Sita said this, that, you know, so not right away. You're not going to remember right away, but you have to be happy now. Because you receive knowledge and then you're going to practice, you have more encouragement. Okay, so be happy, smile. Thank you. Oh.